So I think what I want to do is just make it a goal to spend at least 10 minutes in this notebook every day. And then she proceeded to not pick up the notebook for another two weeks. Yeah, it's Wednesday, January 19th. It has been exactly two weeks since I made that last vlog. In fact, you might have noticed that last Friday, the last time, uh, which is usually my vlog upload day, I made a video about omniscient narrators instead. And that is because last Wednesday, I sat down with my notebook and I had not written in it in a week. And sure enough, I just lost all momentum. And I was like, you know what? It's been a while since I've made a writing workshop video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that today instead. And I don't regret it. It was a really fun video to make and I, I had it scripted and I had been wanting to make it for a while. So it was still a productive day, but yeah, I have not looked at this book and I'm really struggling to get back into it. Uh, why is this? I think it's just a whole bunch of reasons. I think there's like kind of a natural fear when you step away from a book for a month or two, which it's been since the end of November for me at this point, and it's now January 19th, so almost two months. A little bit of trepidation, like I, I don't know what kind of shape it's in, and the more distance I get from it, the more it seems like a giant mess in my head. Uh, another part of it, I, I can't deny, is the fear that this is the book I want to query, use to query to find a new agent later this year, and like, there's fear there. 100%. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm resisting. And Lisa's live stream just started. We are in just the five minute warm up sprint, which I'm using to blog instead. And I took care, I got up early this morning and I took care of some other, you know, freelance tasks that I had to do. And I just, today, I really, my goal is just to get to really truly get my head back in this book. I think I'm overcomplicating things in my head. In fact, I had part of one of the things I had to do this morning was um, email, respond to an email from one of my book coach clients. We had a consultation a couple days ago. She emailed this morning feeling stuck on some things and I emailed her back. And as I was talking her through this, I was like, you know what? So much of what I'm saying to her applies to me and this book. It's, it's not as complicated as I'm making it out to be in my head. Uh, this book idea is not that complicated. I, and, and if it's getting, if it gets to the point where it feels that way, it's my book and I can simplify it. And so I think I'm gonna be mentally cutting some darlings today. I, I suspect that's, that's where this is leading me. And I apologize for being so vague about it. I wanna be more specific, but you know, I'm always kind of a little bit careful about what I choose to share. Uh, about this project. Um, I think something about the victim um, that I really like, I think I might have to let go of it because I just don't think it's the kind of thing I can pull off and I think it's the thing that's making this too complicated. Four seconds left on this uh, countdown, so I will be back in a little bit. <laughs> in. I've got three minutes left on the second sprint and I'm actually doing pretty good. I started, let's see, I've got about three pages that I've written and um, I picked up right where I left off. I remembered the big kind of backstory revelation I had uh, last time I worked on this and I, it's still great. I'm, I, I still know that that's the way to go and I just kind of started there and I started writing through some backstory and things are starting to lock together a little bit more. Um, it's definitely though at the point where I'm wondering if this needs to be the kind of book that's told in a before after format. I had not, I did not write my, my first zero draft or whatever that way. It's all just like the timeline is very linear, linear. It starts 
here and it ends uh, two days later. But now I'm wondering if I need to have some kind of flashback chapters because it's a lot of backstory <laughs> and it's it's pretty complicated and I'm I'm just trying to imagine how I would work all of that in in a non info dumpy way. It's not impossible. I mean, but I also like, you know, the before and after format in mystery sometimes. <laughs> what are you doing? Really? Why? <clears throat> really? I'm trying to work. Anyway, so that's where I am right now. Um, that's, you know, I'm not feeling particularly strongly about it one way or the other. Like I said, I really like the before after format, but I don't want to do it if it's not gonna, you know, if it's not really necessary, if that makes sense. So I think that's the next step I have to figure out. But hey, right now I'm feeling good. I like where this is going. So time is up, time to get back on this live stream. And in the last sprint, something that has been bugging me for a while that I haven't been able to figure out, finally figured it out. And now I think I'm feeling like I'm back into it and I'm ready to do this book. Um, I figured out something about this character's death, a specific detail that has been eluding me and now I know what it is and it's real creepy and I like it a whole lot. <laughs> So uh, it's about noon and the sprint's about to end and the live stream's about to end. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, run some errands, take Rosa out, but uh, I think I'm gonna be working on this more this afternoon because I'm feeling pretty into it. Definitely made some progress there. I am officially back to feeling really good about this book. I think what I realized is my issue two weeks ago is I had at the very end of the last writing sprint two weeks ago, I finished off with a big click. It was about the relationship between two of my characters and it was great and it was exciting. And I, I knew I felt in my gut that it was the right change, the right, I don't even want to say change, the right addition to the story, the right connection. But I think the reason I didn't pick up my notebook for the next two weeks is because it also made me realize how many questions I have yet to answer, how many new questions I had to answer, and just how big of an undertaking this is going to be. And it just, every time I looked at the notebook, it was like, oh, I gotta climb this mountain and I just don't even wanna take the first step, you know? And so today it was like that at first, but as I started working through it, at some point I crested over that peak and now it just feels like I'm running downhill. Things are coming together a lot faster. Some really key important pieces that were missing in my NaNoWriMo draft, I've got them figured out now. I, okay, so my hat's off to mystery writers who manage to write a book a year or even more. And in every single one, you figure out a way to kill someone creatively, <laughs> uh, make it believable that the murderer has not been caught and just like make that interesting because you know what? That's really hard. That's really hard. I'm thinking about too all the mystery shows that I watch that put out like a new episode every week and every week there's like a creative death. I feel weird saying that, but you know what I mean? There's a body is found and it's like, whoa, how did this happen? Where did this come from? Who could have done this? And um, yeah, how, how, do, how do writers do this on a weekly basis? I don't even know if I could come up with one of these a year. 
this is really hard is all I'm saying, but it's also really, really fun. And I think that the time that I've taken with this has paid off because now I have a really, definitely an interesting way for someone to die. Um, I have worked out how the corpse vanished because that was part of, I think I said this a long time ago, part of the premise of this book that you know starting out is that someone was killed, but also their body vanished, has never been found, therefore, they can't actually be declared dead yet and some characters question whether the character actually is dead um so the question is if the character is dead what happened to the body and i i worked it all out like i worked out what it looks like from the the character's points of view who are just now coming into this situation at the beginning of the book but i also worked it out from the point of view of my most important backstory characters who were all involved in what happened to the victim it's all laid out it all makes sense. Whew. I feel so much better about this, and now I feel like I'm not lying to you when I say I really am going to work on this a little bit every day and still have my dedicated Wednesdays. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go on this book. I really, really want to start writing that draft, but I still have a little bit of work to do getting the general structure of it together, and my plan is still to continue working on reverse engineering what's going on here uh, through January and then I think I said I was gonna spend February reading through the NaNoWriMo draft and making my notes and kind of like rearranging it into what could be a decent outline for the draft and then in March I just want to draft the thing let's do this right anyway that's enough for this vlog please let me know how your projects are coming how your writing is going how life is going in general I hope everything is going well and I will see you next week with more videos bye